So most of you know me as Kaika. Since you're watching this, you probably know that I am a vlogger who makes videos and writes blog about everything cosplay. To some of you, you might also see me as a cosplayer that, well, mm, looks decent on pictures. And the cosplays of me that you are familiar with are mostly female cosplays. I rarely cross-dress. I'm never quite comfortable with complimenting my own looks because the fact is, to me, beyond my fake lashes, thick makeup and costumes, I am just another girl with problems and insecurities to overcome. I'm gonna let you in on a secret. This may come as a shock to you, but growing up, I've often wished I was a boy. For someone whose cosplay history is so full of female cosplay, and who's more often seen in a skirt than pants, I understand if you don't believe me, but maybe the Asians watching this would. Traditionally, Chinese families always preferred baby boys over baby girls, because only a male can preserve the family line. It's not just favoritism, but it's a true fact of how a family name is historically used in the culture. And growing up, I really felt like I was placed into that box. It's probably just me, but... Anyway... I am the youngest in the family, with a brother who is 3 years older than me. My brother has always been this funny, friendly, smart and well-liked kid who would be able to get away with anything. Me, on the other hand, being the plain and stupid kid I was, well, let's just say growing up was hard comparing myself to him. And you know, we have the typical sibling rivalry thing. My mom was really strict when I was a kid. And being a girl meant she never quite let me do anything. I remember being interested in taekwondo and karate. And I begged my mom to bring me. But she wouldn't because according to her... I am a girl. I hated that. I hate being told what to do just because of my gender. Of course, now I understand why she did that and, and she loves me very much. But growing up, I constantly felt inadequate, small and strive very hard to prove myself. Unfortunately for me, I am neither smart nor athletic, which places me far below most boys in those arenas. The only sport I was good at while growing up was badminton. It was like the only sport that came my way, I don't know why, and being the only sport that I was good at meant I priced it pretty high on my abilities. I have this vivid memory of me playing with this new kid on the block. Unfortunately for us, we had to play outdoors and the wind kept blowing in my direction. So whenever I tried to smack the shutter cord, the wind would screw it up. It took a few tries before the boy finally rolled his eyes and said, um, can I play with a boy instead? <sighs> I mean, now I love being a girl, but the fact that that memory lasted to this day, you know what that means. I don't know, I think I'm just a natural contradiction. I mean, if I was a mild and cute girl, then maybe I'd be more okay being looked down upon for being a girl. But, alas, for me, I have to have a strong sense of myself. I guess this difference of what I was in real life versus what everyone around me wants me to be versus what I want to be was what created all this unexplainable stress and tension. Okay, maybe not a samurai, but... <laughs> Growing up, my imaginations and drawing were my best friends and I had so much fun with them. Probably because I felt like such a useless little thing in real life, I really lived out my life in my imagination. I imagined myself to be big, powerful, influential, and full of justice. You know, like the heroes on TV, but beautiful at the same time, seems I'm a girl. I couldn't really understand why I felt like that, and it didn't gel with anything around me. Power and beauty didn't seem to go together. The heroes are always guys. Even though I said I wished I was a boy, but it was really more circumstantial than what I really want. I I just felt weird. I just felt like an oddball. But then, I found Japanese anime. 
I found magical girls. My first Maho Shoujo encounter was Creamy Mommy. This discovery about a girl on TV that is small and ordinary, having the ability to transform into someone important, gave me so much inspiration and motivation as a kid. She was still human, but so much bigger than life. And I remember being so happy whenever I watched the show. It's hard to describe this, but suddenly it felt like maybe I wasn't so weird after all. Throughout my cosplay history, it's not difficult to tell that I particularly like strong females. I'm comfortable with my gender, I just want a stronger me. Which is what makes Magical Girl stand out to me. Like their masculine counterpart, Magical Girls also represent righteousness and power. But more than that, they also bring with them love, kindness, compassion, and above all, femininity. Even though the source of their power is mythical magic that cannot be explained with science, their influence as an icon of feminine power is very much real. Well, at least to me. I never really thought about how this genre started until OMY had me researching about something that inspires me in the 60s. And then I found out that that was when the first Maho Shoujo anime started. It was Sally the Witch. Sally was a witch princess who came down to Earth to play, made friends and decided to stay on indefinitely. Of course, she had to keep her supernatural ability secret and pretend to be a normal kid. Then Sally the Witch is also widely known to be the first magical girl series in Japan and the first shoujo anime in the world. Being the first, it definitely influenced how this genre would develop in the future. Like how the heroines must always keep her identity a secret and there is always a sidekick and a transformation sequence, so on and so forth. Other notable shoujo series of that period is Princess Knight and Himitsu no Akachan. Out of the three, I've only had the chance to watch Princess Knight when I was a kid. I guess the 60s was just too far away from me. When it dawned upon me that I had nothing to say about Sally the Witch, it felt like I was back in square one of my research. But then I realized the present wouldn't have been without the past. If Mizuteru Yokoyama Sensei didn't come up with the manga and Toei Animation didn't choose to animate it, the anime industry might have been a very different landscape now. There would still be Gundams and Dragon Balls, but there wouldn't be Sailor Moons or anything for girls. There would be no role models for girls to look up to in the anime world. No role models to teach them how important kindness and compassion are, and most importantly, teach them how girls can make a difference too. When I realized how much impact the decision that was made 47 years ago brought, I realized I'm not as dislodged from it as I thought. Its influences still persist till this day and for many years to come. There's no appropriate ending to this video except a thankful and happy heart that someone made a decision that affects me even till this day. A decision that made many little girls around the world find their place and feel special. So thank you for the inspiration and thanks for the adventure. <laughs>